Hey folks, my name is Ed Trevers. My pronouns are he, him, and his. I'm an Anglican priest serving in the beautiful parish of Christ Church Shelburne that sits on the ancestral and on the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. This week we're talking a little bit about I want to see Jesus and what that statement can mean, what questions it raises, the implications, the possibilities that, that arise because of it. Today, I want to look particularly at where can I see Jesus? I mean, the story comes from the 12th chapter of the Gospel of John, where some Greeks come along and they say, we want to see Jesus. We've heard about this guy. We want to see Jesus. Those people had to ask where they might see Jesus. They were talking to Philip, the disciple. We want to see him. Where is he? Can you point him out? Can you point us in his direction? There's another name for Jesus that we hear from the prophet Isaiah. Emmanuel, God with us, God among us. Jesus is God among us. Jesus is the physical embodiment of God here in this world. He is the perfect example of the living being we know as God, physically manifested itself, physically manifested here with us. But that word, Emmanuel, that name, Emmanuel, it means so much if you allow it to. It isn't just a matter of God taking physical form in the form of Jesus Christ, but rather that God, that Jesus, is always physically present to us. If I were to ask you, where do you go to connect with God? Where do you go to commune with God? Some might say the woods, some might say, I go onto the water, I go into the mountains, I go to the valleys. I sit in a cafe on a busy city street. I enjoy the swamp. I take my time and journey through the wilderness. There's many places that we can say, this is where I go to commune with God. And all of them are valid. We do have our encounters with God in that place. Those places offer us many images like Jesus. Images that teach us the nature of God. Images that spur us on to ask questions. Images that, that demand that we pay attention to the little things, the nuance, the depth of creation, the marvel that is this world. But we don't necessarily think about seeing Jesus in others. I mean, sure, he tells us, he literally tells us that you will, when you do for these, you do for me. When you do for the least of these, you do for me. That he is present in the being, in that human who's standing opposite of you. But another equally valid truth is that whenever we hear someone speak in love, we are hearing the words of Jesus. Whenever we hear somebody offering us true spiritual wisdom, we are hearing Jesus. Whenever we see someone offering themselves to their community, we are seeing Jesus. A little while ago on Twitter, somebody sent me a link to a speech to a, a beautiful, mind-blowing, life-altering speech. It was given at the 2016 Poor People's Campaign, and it was given by an amazing woman by the name of Valerie Kaur. And in this talk, in this short talk, and I'll include a link in the description, in this short talk, she offers us nothing but pure love. She offers us hope. Her words offer us a promise of a better tomorrow. Her words offer us a way of reframing the world we currently see so that we can experience it in a new way. And, and rather than experiencing dread, rather than feeling despair, we see it as, as an entryway into something new and wonderful and amazing. Her words are of 
love. They are filled with wisdom. They are filled with light. But Valerie Kaur, I don't suspect, would call herself a Christian. As a matter of fact, in her speech, she speaks the language of her ancestors, the language of her family. She speaks the language of her faith. Seek. And yet Jesus is there. And I am as certain of that as I am certain I am standing in front of this camera speaking to you. We can hear Jesus in the words of people of every faith when they speak love. We can see Jesus in action, in the behaviors and in the actions of people of every faith when we see people acting in love. You want to see Jesus and you don't know where. Open your eyes. Open your eyes for those examples of love and mercy and charity and compassion, those examples of hope that you see all around you. He is there. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord's face be made to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord's countenance be lifted up to you. May you always know the peace of being in the Lord's presence. And I pray that you will open your eyes and your ears and your heart to those experiences around you that are happening all the time. And that you will see the living Son of God present to you in that moment offering you a wonderful example of what it means to be an heir to the throne of heaven. Amen.